All right, so the other day I was riding with the Thai national team. Now this is a mix of under 23 riders, junior riders, and maybe a senior rider or two. Uh, we got girls, we got boys, we got men, we got women. So it's pretty interesting just watching how everyone pedals, what's going on. This person ahead of us, I believe had, well, they did have DI2, and I think they're, um, they couldn't shift because they're in the small ring and the sort of biggest on the back and they were just spinning. Now it's a very interesting thing and a lot of people, especially a lot of the tires seem to do this, it's very odd, is that when they're not going hard, and I mean like the roads are really fast here, so not going hard like as in they might still be going 30, 35 k's an hour. They just shift in the small ring and just use like the small, small. It's a very odd phenomenon. I don't quite understand why they do it. Maybe it's because they want to spin more and like that's a way to make sure they spin more. I'm not 100% sure, but it is definitely something that you noticed. Uh, so I was riding, riding just behind them. It was pretty good. We actually, we had a police convoy. So they were making sure that everyone, um, everyone didn't pull out in front of the riders, uh, which is pretty nice. Uh, so yeah, it was definitely a good ride to be on. Uh, there were about 20 or so people on the uh, uh, on the road uh, in this little group. They left at about eight o'clock uh, and it wasn't too hot. A lot of them wear arm warmers, which is pretty sensible. Don't want to get burnt. Don't. I mean, I don't think they really get burnt that much, the ties, but you know, don't want to risk any chance of that a lot of a couple more leg warmers as you can see on the right here um but yeah they were pretty chilled people like you know they knew how to ride a bike obviously all these people they race most weekends i would guess uh so yeah they were pretty comfortable in the pack you know, like no hands all of that was pretty chill for them uh you can tell if they were juniors mainly just because they would have like a 14 tooth on the back because of junior gears uh if you're not aware if you're a junior you can't have like a 50 11 so i believe most the, the most common ratio i think you're allowed is a 52 14 so most of them will have that gearing or maybe a 50 13 maybe or something 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 around that anyway uh so yeah it was interesting looking at their bikes most of them i don't believe had bike sponsorships maybe one or two might of them got uh, got a cheap deal or whatever uh but i don't th the national team definitely isn't sponsored by uh one bike so for instance in the uk the national team is sponsored by cervello so everyone will get given a cervello um but here that is not the case uh, it was interesting to see how many people had power meters not very popular and obviously in thailand power meters are pretty expensive um more expensive than i mean obviously compared to like everything else bikes are expensive in thailand uh, but power meters are uh, even more so so i guess not all of them have that much money to spend on their bikes so they might be able to get a bike maybe cheap on from the bike shop but don't really think they need a power meter which i thought was very interesting because um I don't know, most people generally ride with power meters now, um, who are sort of serious-ish, but I guess budget and uh, maybe they, yeah, I guess maybe they just don't think it's as important. Uh, wheels, most people had, some people had calm wheels, some people had normal wheels. Um, all the bikes were like classic carbons, like there wasn't anything like spectacular. I mean, most of the people on like the bunch ride that I do, the Starbucks bunch ride on Friday, have nicer bikes than these guys uh, in reality. But you know, some of them, had, like some of the older guys, I think had some nice bikes, but definitely the juniors, you know, not anything crazy, a couple of TCRs in there. TCRs are very popular here as well. Uh, so yeah, it was pretty interesting just seeing how everyone was pedaling. Um, I'd definitely say like there is a difference between these guys and like the World Tour guys that you, I've ridden with before, obviously. Um, and I wouldn't say like, like you know, all that, all that pedaling technique is absolutely super smooth or incredible. Uh, but it was good to ride with them nonetheless, just to see how, what they do. Um, they were going for a real easy, probably a like two, three hour ride, just like 100 watts, two, 100 watts on the back, 200 watts on the front. You can see this guy on the left is honking everyone's horn, making sure no one's pulling out. I believe he was sort of their coach or something. Uh, but yeah, they all stay in the Mercure Hotel, I believe it is, in Chiang Mai uh, when they're training here. It's a pretty good place to train, probably one of the best, well, I guess it is probably the best place to train in Thailand because they all seem to come here. Lots of mountains here, lots of flat roads. It's uh, just a good place to be. So it's nice just hanging on, on the back. It's always good to ride with other people. I feel like when I ride with sort of people who know how to ride and like spin a lot, you're suddenly really concentrating on your pedaling technique and like saving energy and things. Um, so you can see on the left, this guy's just dropping back, done his little turn on the front. Um, it was a real cash pace all day. Uh, I did, unfortunately, Tori got a puncture, so we could not continue. I probably should have done that, but you know, to get some more footage for you, but alas, I was, I was a good bloke, so I, uh, I stopped and, well, she didn't really need help fixing it, but we turned around. I'd already done a couple hours for the day, already done a Doisa Tep effort, so I was not feeling, not feeling like I wanted to do like a five hour ride with these lads. But anyway, you can definitely see this guy at the back definitely has some problems with his gears because he's not pulling through at all and just seems to be spinning quite closely. This guy on the left seems, you know, a bit older. Um, I guess he's probably, you know, a senior rider. He's got a nice uh, Tarmac SL5, I believe, or the older version, nice carbon wheels as well. He had probably the nicest bike on the ride, but he was looking pretty cash as well. 
pretty comfortable on the bike, as you can see, just moving the legs around and just seeing what is going on. Sorry for my GoPro, my GoPro is a little bit um, smudged at this moment in time. I forgot to clean it before I left my house, which was a noob mistake because the footage is not exactly parfait, uh, not up to the usual standard that I expect. But anyway, it was all good. If you have any questions about riding with pros or riding with these national teams, then let me know. I would quite like to do you know, some intervals with these people, see how fast they are. Um, I'm not really sure what the level of the Thai national team is. Like obviously the, the top guys, like you know, they're not going to be that dissimilar to um, you know, uh, the top pros around the world. Like generally, you know, the powers are just a little bit different, but it's not crazy. But these juniors are on how fast some of them are. Some of them looked um, pretty solid. Like some blokes, there was one bloke who was maybe like six foot, real solid built. Uh, but others were you know, generally sort of classic Thai build, not too big, um, quite slight. Uh, so yeah, it was interesting to see that. Um, I'm not sure what races they do. I guess they just probably do some local tie, tie races and probably some international races. I'm not sure if they go over to Europe or not. Like, it's probably quite expensive. Um, but it's definitely, like, helpful for them if they want to get and try and get in a Euro European team if they're racing in Europe. Because racing here is uh, interesting because the roads are also wide. So, like, you can see here, I mean, a lot of the races do have on highways. Um, I've talked to people and they're like, yeah, a lot of the races just like highways and then maybe a climb at the end or something, but they're not as technical uh, or nowhere near as technical as the races in Europe with like, you know, for instance, Belgium, where it's just like corners every five meters or whatever. Uh, but yeah, it'll be pretty cool if any of these tire riders go big, uh, hit the world tour or whatever. It'll be interesting to see if that happens or not. I mean, I, it'll be quite crazy for these people suddenly to hit the world tour. It'll be quite a change of scenery, quite a change of, uh, I don't know, just quite different to their lives at this moment in time. But yeah, they're all pretty approachable, pretty friendly. None of them really had any issue with us hopping on the back, which was nice. Um, there was just, you know, a good vibes. Uh, at one point, I thought all the people were like honking us to get out the back, but it's actually just all the traffic. They're pretty good at pointing things out, actually. Um, you know, just making sure no one crashed or anything, which was good because you really don't want to crash. But yeah, it was like, you know, maybe for me, it was like 130 watts or 150 watts at the back. So it was nothing major at all. That's the thing with the pro guys. They don't, I mean, these guys aren't pro, but like the national team riders or whatever, they never really like, you know, that like they don't seem to do together. Like, as a ride together, they don't really seem to do, like, you know, hard tempo rides where they'll just be, like, riding, like, an hour at tempo or something. They generally just go real easy together and then maybe do some efforts if they need to. Because, um, obviously, I mean, I'm not sure here, but often people have different schedules. They have different coaches. So, it's, like, each day people have different um, different things to do. So, it's easier if they just roll out real easy and if someone's have a rest day, they can just do that. Maybe turn around earlier, and if they want to do some intervals, then they can just cruise with them and then do some intervals up some climbs or whatever. But I think this is sort of just a, a general sort of two hour spin, two, three hour spin um, down the highway. Very flat ride, no elevation. That's a good thing here. If you want to do a flat ride, like you can literally do a, a pan flat ride, maybe 100 meters elevation in 200k or something. Like it's insane how flat uh, Chiang Mai can be. Or you can do the hills and smash out some intervals up the hills. Um, I think the mountain bike team did Samong, uh, which is a decent climb. I've actually yet to do it. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to do that potentially with a Thai team. They seem to go up there quite often. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you want me to do more videos with the Thai national team, then let me know down below because I can do this. Or if you want me to do more intervals or KOM efforts or whatever you want, I will do. I believe I will be going for a King of the Mountain tomorrow, uh, which should be good laugh. Should get this one by about 30 to 40 seconds is my prediction. Um, but yeah, cheers for watching and I will see you in the next video.